Hi everyone, I'm going to show you a bit of what I've been doing in the past few weeks, uh, working on Sail Away 3 of course, and this time I've been working on the sails. Uh, I've try, been trying to make uh, intelligent sails that know everything there is to know about their shape, about the wind, about how they react and uh, about the forces uh, in them. So uh, here's the boat designer and you see a little boat with one sail, the main and um, it's got a nice shape. I've edited this shape here. You can see a little few dents in it. Let's see, like this. You can change the shape of your sail. Well, I've destroyed it now, but I will fix that later. <laughs> How nice. Um, those sails, they. Uh, they of course know their size, they know the, where the three corners of the sail are. They will follow these around. There's the tack and the clue corner of the sail that you can change. Let's zoom in on it. See, like this. You can change the depth here from because this is just the overall depth of the sail but uh, you can also change the cut of your sail yourself so for each of your sails you can uh, uh, determine if you want uh, the curve to be uh, more uh, round or more flat you, if you want it more to the front more to the top more to the bottom so even uh, if there's a, a race with with identical boats using identical trim settings, uh, sailing on an identical course, they will still have different speeds because they made different choices for the cut of their sails. I think that's a really cool feature. Uh, another thing is that you can change the material of your sail. Well, the boat design again. You can't do that at runtime. You can change the, the texture, but the texture is something else than the actual material of the sail. Uh, if I change it to a laminate sail, for instance, this is a smooth and uh, non-stretchy material. It will have more power. The curve will be it will be easier to change the curve of the sail. Whereas if I change it to a canvas sail, it will have uh, it, it will be more stretchy, uh, not as smooth, less power in the sail. And you can also see here the curve at the bottom of the sail. This is round even though there's quite some tension on the on the luff at this at this uh, moment because if you maybe if i go to look at it from the top a little bit more you can see that when i change it to laminate you see this uh, this air air wing airplane wing shape whereas if i change it to canvas it becomes much more round also here at the top you see that it uh, it opens quite a lot Whereas if I change it to a laminate sail, it will close much more because this material stretches less. Let's go back to Dacron. A uh, different thing that you can do is uh, add some details to your sail because normally when you sit here, you look at this small part of the sail and you have a texture of maybe uh, even as big as 2K by 2K and it still looks crappy because uh, yeah, this, this little part of the sail is stretched out over your entire screen. It becomes very pixelated. Um, so therefore, I've added some details. First of all, corners, seams, and nice rings. So that changes things a lot, makes it much more realistic. Also, you can set the reefs. So there's no reef now. Add one reef, or two, or three reefs. And if you look here, you can see that it added nice rings and then some corner reinforcements. The bottom of the sail can also be changed. You can put it inside the boom. I have to lower the tech and the clue, of course, a little bit. Or you can 
make it loose like this or also lower it a little bit so you get this nice curve here in your sail save this one and go to the jib so here's the jib and for a jib you can uh, uh, either attach it to the forestay or use a fixed furl drum like this so you can furl your sail or a small one like this or have it loose like this and of course also the corners and the seams all work in this as well so I've also set up this little test scene with uh, some eight or nine, ten sails. Um, you can see the main sail, small one here in the front. Uh, also uh, a gaff rig, including a top sail, uh, um, Go Zero here, a storm sail and uh, a normal jib. And you can see them flapping around because the wind now blows from the front. The sails know uh, the speed and direction of the wind and they know what how to behave according to that um, it runs quite smoothly at some 400 frames per second this is nine sails flapping around you would never be able to do this in in sail away 2 i've used uh, different techniques here uh, everything's run in the background on separate threads and super smooth super super fast so this is the same scene, uh, you can see here all the sails, there they are, but let's focus on this, uh, this jib for a second, so, like this, um, and you have to know that a sail basically has uh, three corners, it has a head, a tack and a clue here at the bottom, or here at the, uh, at the end. And also has three sides, the leech, the luff, and the bottom of the sail. And it doesn't know anything about your trim settings or your trim lines, but at the end result of everything that you do is that there's a tension on each of these three corners and as a result, a tension on each of these, uh, each of these three sides. Uh, it knows these tensions and so it also knows the shape it has to, uh, it has to have. So let's, let's see how this works. So first of all, if I put tension on the luff, you can see two things. First of all is that this here hangs a little bit through. Maybe if I make the wind a bit stronger, you can see it. I have a 50, <laughs> 50 knot wind now. But if I add tension to this, you can see it becomes straight. Another as aspect is that this curve here at the bottom, you can see it at the bottom a be the best, this curve is like a round and when I put tension on it, it goes more to the front and it becomes more like an airplane wing. If I put tension on the bottom edge of my sail, it becomes flat of course at the bottom, but you can see that it doesn't really change a lot here at the top does do something, oh, the wrong, wrong slider, does do something, but uh, not a lot there. And that's lo logical because you pull here, you don't pull here, you pull here. And if I want to close this here, I have to put tension on the leech of the sail. If I do that, you can see that it closes. So that's pretty cool how it works. Let's put a furler uh, on, on it, a uh, fixed furler. There it is, furler. And if I start reefing it, it rolls up nicely. How cool is that? And if I lower a sail, it has its own logic. It knows what to do. If I tell it uh, you are raised or you're not raised or you're reefed this far or not reefed, it knows what to do. If you have uh, tension on your bottom, right? yes or no, 
how much tension do you have on your leech or on your love it all happens at runtime uh, and if I change the direction of the wind it will know when it starts to flap or it flaps to the other side it's just completely self-sufficient nice sail and the end result will be a force forward and a force sideways and I will tell you more about that the next time